So you guys seem to kind of like my opinions, or at least to hear my opinion on baseball in general. So we're going to do another one of these. It's going to be a bit of a recap here on kind of some of the trade stuff I missed. And by the time I upload this, I'm sure there'll be more stuff. So I'll probably add that in there as well. But there's a couple of trades that I wanted to throw my thoughts out there and see what you thought as well. If you enjoy these videos, leave a like on the video and comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. I really like seeing your opinions. I read all the comments. So it's super cool and it helps the video. So thank you with your faith. Now, the Seattle Mariners have, it's been known that they're looking to improve the roster by they're looking to sign some people, etc. We knew they were going to be looking for stuff. They said they wanted to go get a left-handed bat and they got one, but I don't understand how they got it. Okay. The Seattle Mariners have made a trade with the Cincinnati Reds, which frustrate me beyond belief, but we'll get to that in a minute. They've made a trade with the Reds and they've acquired Jesse Winker and Eugenio Suarez. That's two pretty big bats right there. Big power from both guys. And it doesn't feel like they gave up a ton, at least in my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. It looks like the headliner of the steal going back to the Reds is going to be starting pitcher Brandon Williamson, who does look pretty solid. And he hits top 100 prospect list so far that we've seen. I mean, Baseball America has their pre-2022 uh, roster out there right now, and he's number 83 on there. So he's obviously good. There's no denying that. That's a top 100 prospect. But that is the headliner, followed by outfielder Jake Fraley, who has really not shown a huge step forward as he's come to the majors. He's only 25. So it's not like he's going to be, you know, uh, terrible or anything, but that's your starting outfielder right there. You've lost Castellanos. You've lost Winker, and you're placing with Jake Fraley. Even if Jake Fraley does end up having a pretty solid season, that's a pretty big difference. Jake Fraley had the most at-bats of his career last season. He had 214 at-bats. He hit 210 with a 352 on base percentage. Now, I'm a big on base percentage kind of guy. I like that a lot. Now, his OPS came out to a 721. Will going to the Reds ballpark help that a little bit? Probably. But he's not really anything to write home about. Definitely didn't think you were going to get Jesse Winker from him. And then a former top pitching prospect in Justin Dunn. Justin Dunn at one point looked to be legitimate, looked to be amazing. And while I don't think anybody's totally sold out on him being terrible by any means, he's slipped and slumbled through his first bit of major league experience. Also in a fun twist of fate, he made his debut actually against Cincinnati. It didn't go well. So like, don't look it up, but full circle. Woo. At a quick glance of his stats, he pitched in 11 games, started 11, and the old school ERA guys are probably going to think he looks pretty dang good. He posted a 375 ERA last season and pitched 50 innings and a third. His whip was a 1.311, so technically it was better than it's been in his career, but it's still not very great. And FIP, for instance, did not think he was a three ERA pitcher. They pegged him at a 4.74. Now, the thing with Justin Dunn, and it's been a his it's been a, a thing in his history here, is the, the ability to not give out free bases. That boy loves to throw some walks here and there. He had his best walk per Nine last season and that was a 5.5 yikes that's gonna bring that's gonna be an issue especially when you're giving up homers at a 1.1 rate per nine innings now again no one's totally sold out that justin dunn can't be a good if not great pitcher he still has some stuff that could be great he's also controlled till 2026 so it's not like he's old or anything he's 26 but again you're looking at him you're looking at fraley and then you're looking at a top 100 prospect and that got you not only jesse winker but eugenio suarez i'm just kind of shocked and i'm kind of disappointed by the cincinnati reds i kind of think their fans deserve to be angry deserve to be like, yo, what the hell, dude? Now, I know if you play MLB The Show, you think Jesse Winker might be literally a god. And honestly, he had a fantastic season last year. There's some flaws there, but Jesse Winker still hit 24 bombs in 423 at-bats and really continued what he's shown kind of his whole career, the ability to hit the baseball really well. He's a consistent hitter throughout his career. His lowest OPS in a season is 830. He, he I mean, an incredible hitter in Jesse Winker is. Now, the one thing he can do, he can't hit lefties pretty bad. When you look at his splits, they were pretty brutal. He hit 177 against lefties last season at a 288 on base percentage his ops was a 572 such a drastic difference from his 1.070 ops against righties i mean righties he murdered them lefties ooh. now the good news here is it seems that a lot of the pitchers that he's gonna be seeing in the al west kind of a righty heavy starting rotation among the division's teams so he should do 100 amazing and it's not like they can't tuck him at dh and then give him a day off against a lefty anyway but He's a very good player. 21 bombs against righties last season. Again, a 1.070 OPS. He's so good. Defensively, Jesse Winker's not really somebody you're going to want to be sticking out there. He can mix in some DH time, maybe a little bit of corner outfield to give some more guys some rest, but he's going to be a DH. And honestly, that's the left-handed bat that the Mariners needed. I mean, this is a team that's been looking to end the drought. That's a huge bat to get. And again, not the biggest price they had to pay. They also get another exciting bat in Suarez, which I feel like is going too much under the radar. The Mariners obviously lost Kyle Seager, and that's going to be upsetting. Bit of a fan favorite, if you will. But Suarez looks to be solid. At a quick glance of his stats last year, he was worth negative 0.7 war. And you're like, uh-oh, well, how is he good? He still hit 31 bombs. His batting average is going to turn off a lot of the batting average fellas off. He hit 198. With a 286 on base percentage, and his OPS was a 713, OPS plus is an 80. Now, 
could have been worse when he hit the ball in the air he had an 801 ops so uh, towards the second half of the season we started to see him start chucking those balls up in the sky a little bit and it started working out a lot better his second half seasons look way way promising which again makes me confused on why the reds would trade him and winker they weren't entirely a team needing to rebuild they looked fine they just looked like they needed to add a piece or two i don't understand why the reds are crying poor and crying money especially after a couple seasons ago when they went out and they got castellanos they had bauer they had had Moustakas and stuff like that made it look like they were going to try to build a team around the aging Joey Votto and give him a little bit of a last hoorah if you will in the first half Suarez played 86 games for the Reds he had 359 played appearances and his LPS was a 628 ouch but the second half is so exciting in the second half he played 59 games and he had an 859 OPS he also crushed 13 bombs while recording 14 doubles he was pretty dang solid but whatever was going on in the second half it looks like he kind of figured out what what he needed to do and if he can be second half Suarez I think the Mariners are in for an absolute awesome treat to replace good old Kyle Seager also he's not gonna be having to play shortstop and he had a little bit of injury stuff in the beginning of the season if I'm not mistaken but he he's not he's gonna be able to play his third base which is what he's used to nothing new there he's just gonna go out there and be able to focus on him I think adding him as a replacement for Kyle Seager and adding a nice absolute righty mashing killing uh, uh outfielder like Jesse Winker is just monstrous to this Mariners team and I'm kind of excited to see that compared to all the young talent they still have moving forward they I mean they might run that that AL West I know Mariner fans are a little bit upset because it appears that this is the offense Jerry DePoto came out and said that you're looking at the offense they're not going to make any more big moves all that stuff like that I think that's fine you guys have so many MLB ready prospects that are gonna J-Rod's gonna be a freaking monster you got Kelnick who you expect to break out and figure it all out you still have money to be able to add to at the deadline say if you need a piece or whatever I'd personally like to see the Mariners go out and get another starting pitcher I think adding Robbie Ray is nice I'm not as sold on Robbie Ray as a lot of other people are, but I think adding another starter would just solidify that rotation. You've got George Kirby, Emerson Hancock. You have a lot of players that are going to be taking a step forward in this Mariners team. I, I still would like to see the another, just a, something to kind of bolster that, but uh, you have a lot of exciting players to move forward. And with what sticks, you might be able to build a really good team. And if there's something that doesn't stick, you then have flexibility at the deadline to go acquire something and make the team better. Is it Chris Bryant like you were hoping for? No, but I can't even figure out why the Reds would do this. I mean, you guys got a nice haul for a low price i mean reds fans brandon williamson looks like a nice pitcher looks exciting i mean between single a and double a last year he had a 339 era uh, in 19 starts looks good and i mean that 14 strikeout per nine not bad at all and while that's exciting and all i just don't see why the reds would do this the nl central is not is not totally locked under it's not like the cardinals 100 own that the cubs are doing whatever they're doing they were crying broke but then they signed stroman and now they're linked to carlos correa i don't know what the cubs are doing but it's not like they're threat at this moment you look at the pirates which are yeah, unfortunately the pirates and then you look at the brewers who again pitching is disgusting but they need some bats they did just sign andrew mccutcheon but they need a couple more pieces i think it's not like anybody's really taking that division by storm and it's not like the reds are just expensive contracts that are, are suffering i just think reds fans should be very upset with this because this is a team that could have competed they weren't far from it last year and you've made steps to improve you traded tucker barnhart which i think was a good move it freed up some money and you had a, a catcher ready to take the lead and take the take the job in Tyler Stevenson. That's a nice catch, young catcher that's going to be able to take over and do a phenomenal job. I think them putting Wade Miley on waivers and just giving away the, a starting pitcher at ten million in this pitching market, I think, was silly. I, there's no shot you couldn't have got something. There's just I refuse to believe putting Wade Miley on waivers and letting the Cubs claim him in his ten million dollar salary even though he started to slip a little bit in the second half. I don't think that was a smart move. And then sure, Suarez is locked up for, I think, three more years at $36 million. But that's a drop in a bucket for these teams at this point. That's not a hard, that's not an albatross of a contract. And again, you already saw the signs that he was coming back to life in the second half. I just don't get it. You also have Jonathan India, who's a very exciting player, young, cost-controlled, cheap, out there doing his stuff. I just don't know why you don't build around that. You have Votto, he's at the end of his career. Are you, are you just selling and saying, hey, enjoy your time in Cincinnati? we're gonna be like awful or are you are you are you gonna trade him I don't know I just don't understand it and I don't understand why the Reds are crying they have a beautiful ballpark they had a team that was just a couple pieces short I don't understand why they're not putting money into that and saying let's do this thing I just don't understand it Reds fans explain it to me like I'm five there's no way you're not angry anyway my incredibly premature thoughts on it I think the Mariners win this one I think the Reds are losers on this one this dang video ended up me being very mad at the Reds and really liking it for the Mariners so it's, I'm just gonna leave this video as a Mariners Reds the trade reaction here 
here. I'll do more if you like them. Leave a like if you do. I'm interested to hear what you think in the comment section down below. Let me know your thoughts. Explain it to me. Maybe I'm wrong. I've been wrong numerous times. I hope you enjoyed my rambling. I will see you in the next one. Peace.